Hello there. I'm Katrina Roundtree. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I do need to warn you before we get into this chat, I may have children running around in the background. I am doing my utmost to do remote learning, to conduct my business, to try to keep everything running. I'm sure some of you can relate to I don't want to say it, but the chaos of my life right now, this is something that we are all going through. But it's also an incredible time for women in STEM, an inspiring time. And I actually have a debt of gratitude to Vesky for introducing me to the name of Ada Lovelace. I'll be honest with you, prior to our time together, I actually did not know who Ada was. So I've been Googling madly and my goodness, is that not a name that we all need to know? We all need to sing from the rooftop. So fantastic that we are celebrating on Ada Lovelace Day. And of course, we are celebrating inspiring women in STEM. Ada Lovelace Day, which is held on the second Tuesday in October each year, is an international celebration of the achievements of women in STEM. We couldn't think of a more befitting day to support your announcements. It's wonderful to be here today and meet the recipients for the first time and uh, very much also to meet families. Michelle, it's my absolute pleasure to have you to undertake this really, really important ceremony for us here at Vesky. Over to you. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you for inviting me to part of this really special event and to help to recognise and amplify the extraordinary research that's being undertaken by today's recipients. It's so lovely to see a few familiar faces on my screen. So it's now my pleasure, get ready kids, and honour to introduce the recipients to you. Dr. Robin Brown from the University of Melbourne, who is applying addiction neuroscience to understanding the drivers of overeating. Where's the cheers? <laughs> well done. And Dr. Kirsten Ellis from Monash University, who is creating new opportunities for people with disability to become makers by creating circuits. Mom, yay! <laughs> Yay, thank you. That's great cheering. I love that. Dr. Samantha Grover from RMIT University. Yay! Cheers. And Dr. Jessica Hollian from RMIT University, who is using computers to design new medicines. Well done, Jess. <laughs> and Dr. Sarah Jones from Monash University, who is working to find a replacement for steroids. Woohoo! Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> And Dr. Lisa Melke from the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Research Institute, who is working to improve outcomes for the second leading cause of cancer death in Australia. So important. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> and Dr. Louise Olson-Kettle from Swinburne University, who is working towards making 3D printed materials stronger. Yay. Congratulations to all of you. It's tremendous to celebrate this with you and good luck and I hope we meet in person really soon. Thank you so much, Michelle. Just fabulous to have you here, part of us. And congratulations to each one of our recipients and the cheer squads. You were all fantastic. Scientists in general within Australia are dependent on grants and grant funding and live on a year-to-year -year basis. So, you know, that's challenging as funding decreases and the competitiveness of, of getting those funds increases. And then you throw in a pandemic where the opportunity to do your research, create your results, um, be able to write it up, be able to apply for grants, be able to contribute to industry or society or the economy is that much harder. We're already doing disproportionate amount of work at home that is on pay. And this amount of work increased during the pandemic, which competed with their, with their work responsibilities. And many women actually had to go and work part-time to be able to cope with this dual role that has been, uh, you know, increased in terms of responsibilities. Individually, of course, it's important to those women. Like it will get their career back on track. They're going to get, you know, whatever the issues 
um, identified were in their applications, but you know, access to labs, access to funding, so, you know, support their research team. So it will support that individual at an individual level. Of course, there's the institution and it will support the institutions to create greater research, uh, research applications. There's a lot of them were multidisciplinary and collaborative. So there's, you know, multiple flow on effects to other organisations and institutions. Things like the Vesky Grant actually mean that I'll have more time to support the women around me in making sure that their careers stay on track as well. Having extra people in the lab and having another pair of hands in the lab will allow me to focus on setting up some um, post-COVID support here at the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Research Institute for you know other early career researchers and helping them you know get back um, to full productivity. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, combining homeschooling my children with the increased demands of online teaching um, at the university, my research has definitely taken a hit in, in the last 18 months or so. So we're talking about some people doing earth science, looking at the relationship between um, the quality of the soil, food production and climate change. Or we're talking about people investigating the relationship between humans and computers and how to make that process smoother, particularly for people who are vulnerable. Um, and so it's not only the, the fascinating element of, of these uh, projects, but the capacity that these projects are going to have to, to really impact the scientific community, but also the, the broader community, not only in Australia, but globally. The other thing that really struck me when reading through the um, applications was um, just the resilience. The resilience and tenacity of these amazing researchers in the face of not only a global pandemic, but also what that means for them personally in terms of caring responsibilities, household workload, professional workload in terms of teaching, and then interruption to their careers. For me, with this round, it was extremely challenging because every application was worthy. The Vesky grant really helps to give me a leg up to get back on track, back in line with my peers and back in line with where I'd like to be in my own career. This grant will uh, help expand the scope of what we're doing. And so having this grant is just fantastic in terms of being able to fast track the progress, the recovery from this really um, challenging period, being able to employ an additional postdoctoral fellow in the lab who coincidentally was also impacted by COVID um, as she was caring as well, will we'll just sort of catapult us forward and allow us to really fast track all the projects that were stalled during this time. This is gonna be a massive, massive step in the lab. Um, obviously, these are my ideas that I've come up with and really, really need them tested to sort of catapult my career. These are our future scientists and yet they're they're being seriously held back from, from achieving their full potential. Ada Lovelace Day is held on the second Tuesday in October each year. It is the international recognition of the achievements of women in STEM. It aims to increase the profile of women and in doing so, create role models who will encourage more girls into STEM careers and continue to support women already working in STEM. Ladies, that's you. And I want to say thank you. Our next guest, and that is, hello there, Michelle Gallagher. Michelle, of course, is passionate about Vesky and is a leading light in the industry, in STEM, of course, as the head of not one, but I think it's three businesses of her own. What have we got? We've got Opal, we've got Open, everything is happening. Michelle, you're here with us now. Let's get straight into our chat. Firstly, can you can you share with me a little bit about, about those businesses that, that you've got up and running? So lovely to be here and how nice to be able to spend some time together talking about probably my second favourite topic other than my business. Um, but what we do at Opal is we try and use artificial intelligence and data to make better 
health opportunities. No. <laughs> no. 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 How's the last 18 months been for you and your business? Yeah, look, I look, I'm so grateful, so grateful. Um, it's been great for us, and and we're very aware that it's not been great for a lot of people, but for healthcare businesses that work in the digital and data space, it's been a very important time for us to be able to be seen. Um, but over the last eighteen months, we've done incredible things, and we've built open our clinical trial recruitment platform. And it's going and it's making money and it's helping patients find clinical trials and researchers find motivated patients. For women in STEM, this is your moment. You are being appreciated. You are inspiring, inspiring the globe, really. Is that right? Are you, are you really having your moment now? I think it's the beginning of our moment. I see this as a bit of a a red carpet moment where we're just stepping out of the car. We're about to start walking down the red carpet and the spotlights are on us. So it's worth remembering too that there was a woman who was the driver and the leader of the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine. And here in Australia, we've seen so many women on our news service every night and in newspapers from epidemiologists through to um, vaccine developers and public health people. So every time I see a woman hop up on the news and start talking about, you know, these are our data projections or this is the way development of drugs is going or whatever, um, I celebrate. So there's that moment where I stand in the kitchen and go, yes. When you talk about celebrating, I immediately picture Dame Sarah Gilbert, Wimbledon, the standing ovation. I mean, I, I even get chills now. But I know that for women, it's a whole other ball game. And, and I have to ask, how do you get the balance right? I, I think that your children are a little bit older, but you still would have some balls in the air. Yeah, I'm still a mum first and foremost. And as I was just got off the phone to my mum, actually, and we were talking about my 21-year-old son who's at uni and then my 19 year old daughter she did vce last year and she's first year uni and she's just she's smashing it which is great but um you know families so so the 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 good the bad the ugly the complicated the beautiful the joyous families are really important at times like this but it's also finding space where you have really motivated and really incredible women, like a lot of the women we have around us at at Vesky, who have so much to contribute, particularly in the STEM space, and whether it's academia, business, services, government, whatever. Um, And we have to find a way as women, but also a network of women and a community of women, we have to find ways for women to contribute and when they can, how they can, in whichever way they can. And I think, you know, this is kind of the tough stuff and it's not just STEM, it's in your industry too, Katrina, in media, that it's been such an inflexible system for really clever, courageous women to be able to contribute. And bit by bit, I feel like we're chipping away at it, but that's why these programs like the one at Vesky, particularly around career recovery, is just so critical because it's when you bring great ideas together with women that have that real need and someone prepared to fund it and amplify it and accelerate it like Vesky, that's when we start to make a difference. I'm sure also, Michelle, you'd agree that the fact that you are a mum informs and enhances every single thing that you do. I have to admit, for me, I've got a little bit of a vested interest. You mentioned your daughter has has just gone into uni and she's smashing it. Well done. Um, my niece, my niece has um, it, she's studying science at, um, at at uni, and and I, I want to take this conversation. I want to go to her, and I want to know that that there are places that uh, that can help her, and that can equally inspire her as a young woman in the world of science as well. Could you please share with me a little bit more about how how Vesky is helping? Vesky makes a significant difference in Victoria in being able to highlight the individual scientists and not just women we're talking about, but these are people at a a time in their career where they really need this sort of support. So there's a significant market failure that Vesky is picking up and filling here. Women against their wishes are having to opt out because, you know, we're all trying to control things at home, having children, uh, maybe maybe ailing parents as well, all sorts of different reasons. So there is such an important need right now for 
specifically a project like Vesky, how are you able to help them continue their, their support and their research? So I mentor and provide um, support for quite a few women, particularly who are entrepreneurs in the STEM space, because that's my little sort of network. Um, and I often say to women, the best thing you can do to create an insurance policy for your career in STEM is to network. Uh, and this is where Vesky really helps because it is a network of extraordinary people in STEM. So the more people you know and the more people you tell your STEM story to, the more you build that fabric around you that can create that insulation or that safety net for you. So, and often women go, no, no, I'm just going to put my head down and work really hard and then good science will speak for itself. It never does. It never does. So the second bit of advice I always give is, School yourself to be a good communicator. Learn from people like you, Katrina, and the way that you tell stories, the way you capture meaning, key messages, and, and make that connection to people because the more we can excel at telling our stories in STEM, the more they have meaning and the more people realise how critical it is. Science is so much of a community and people don't often think about this, particularly girls, when they think about, oh, no, I don't want to go into STEM, it's too hard or, you know, I don't like maths or whatever it is. It's not that STEM is about problem solving and girls are great at problem solving. So, you know, I often think mums have a great opportunity here to help their girls see that they're good at problem solving. Don't think about maths. Don't think about physics or chemistry. Think about seeing problems and solving them. Let's talk about philanthropy linked with Vesky. That I want to know about. I founded Women in STEM Australia with a co-founder nearly 10 years ago. We've got about 50,000 followers um, and we have a mantra and that is pay it forward. So each time something um, that I have an opportunity to pay it forward, like today with you, is this is paying it forward. So sometimes giving and paying forward doesn't just involve money, but often it does. So thinking about what you can give, and at different times of my life, I've had a bit more money and other times I've had absolutely none. And so it's been a case of let's do whatever you can do. So pay it forward. With philanthropy, um, I like to think of philanthropy as time and money. So the opportunity with Vesky is if you have the time and the networks and the connections, Vesky wants to know if you're in STEM and if you're in big business and if you're in philanthropy or if you're in government, Vesky wants to know because it's those connections that can make a difference. But with the Vesky Foundation, that's an opportunity where people can contribute money and that money is applied beautifully through Julia and Vesky to the, the leaky pipe. Mm. And so Little bits make a big, big, big difference here. So some of the grants that are given out are considerable. They're very large and they make very, very big differences. But I've also seen ways in which Vesky can apply sometimes quite a modest sum of money to make a very, very big difference. You've already inspired in me ways that I think that I could help, even though I have no connection to STEM, but already my mind is ticking over. Let's capture that. And, and who knows, who knows what, what can be discovered, what can be enhanced and what can be found by capturing that individual. Michelle, thank you so much for your time today and thank you for inspiring once again all of us. Despite the challenges that COVID-19 has imposed on so many women in STEM, I'm delighted that Vesky's been able to, in some small way, um, address this by swiftly creating and, and delivering the Vesky Inspiring Women Career Recovery Grants in 2021. Ladies, congratulations. <laughs>